Massive and expensive equipment marks the professional radio station. But in the amateur field, radio parts often include pieces of assorted junk ingeniously assembled by operators who are called hams and who take up broadcasting as a hobby. Cards to prove long-distance contacts are exchanged by the hams and proudly displayed. Jimmy Mulligan here has lots of cards and lots of strange radio parts, such as whiskey glasses mounted on a cake tin. Ma's funnel actually becomes a loudspeaker, and her sieve part of a microphone. Winding a coil becomes comparatively simple when using the family egg beater. And so, while radio's youth is being served, it's cramping Ma Mulligan's culinary style. No end. Well, chow is about ready, so it's time to get the hard-working Mulligan family together. Call Jimmy. Call Jimmy. Call Jimmy. Call Jimmy. Well, I guess that means you, Grandpa. And so Jimmy is called. But shh. Grandpa, Jimmy's practically in a trance right now, so don't interrupt. All amateurs are heroes of the air at heart and dream of a chance to serve humanity or to save lives. It does happen, you know. For instance, in far off Alaska some years ago, Clyde Devina, prominent movie cameraman, devoted long winter evenings to his amateur radio set. Frequently, he talked over a span of 15,000 miles to a lonely lighthouse keeper in New Zealand. Although a great distance separated them, the two amateur operators exchanged gossip nightly and soon became radio buddies. One evening, alone in his cabin, Divina became weak. Deadly vapors from a leaky stove were the cause. A few minutes later, when Divina's conversation ended abruptly, the lighthouse keeper tried to renew the contact. With all windows locked against the freezing weather, Divina's ebbing strength was going rapidly. Finally, realizing that some strange overpowering force was clutching his life, he managed to repeat the cry of help. Help. In answer help. to his friend's cry of distress, help. the lighthouse keeper called the emergency signal, Mayday, Mayday. And so, everywhere within hearing of his voice, operators ceased broadcasting and stood by. With the air lanes now silenced, he called for any amateur operator stationed in or near Teller, Alaska. Near Teller, Alaska. Teller, Alaska. Thus, from a fellow ham over 15,000 miles away, a youthful amateur in Alaska learned that he might yet be able to save the life of a neighbor. Briefly, the lighthouse keeper told his story. And the youngster at Teller lost no time in phoning a doctor living near Divina's cabin to rush to the cameraman's aid. And so, due to the efficiency and quick thinking of radio hams, Clyde DeVinna is alive today. But getting back to the Mulligan family, Jimmy's still missing. Call Jimmy. Call Jimmy. Call Jimmy. Oh dear, Grandpop's missing now too. Well, she'll get him. What's this? Shh. Now they're both in a trance. Perhaps they're listening to another dramatic radio episode, like the story of courage and service of Wilbur Crane, an amateur operator who flew far out over the Atlantic in search of a missing plane. Crane's pilot. Radio Ham Crane had volunteered to make the search for the missing ship in his own plane. Amateurs all along the coast were standing by to pick up progress of the search. Ship radio professionals listened, ready to go to the rescue. Tensely listening to his reports too, and worried for his safety, were Crane's wife and son. For hours, the uneventful search continued, and then... in a bad storm, far out at sea, but the search goes on.
heartbreaking anxiety and fear made minutes seem like hours. Weekly, the dots and dashes continued to come in, but the words they spelled out offered no encouragement to Crane's wife and boy. Then, as suddenly as they flew into it, Crane came out of the battering storm. Sailing smoothly into the dawn, and as the visibility cleared, a miracle happened. For there, right below them by a streak of rare luck, was the missing seaplane with possible survivors. Crane flashes the news. Safely out of the storm, the missing plane found. Never had a happier message come over the crane loudspeaker. The broadcast at the ship's location, their job would be over. But what's this? Hundreds of miles at sea, and their gas practically gone. They hadn't a chance. But Crane's chief concern was to establish the location of that wrecked plane and broadcast the news to the world. Somehow, their plane must be kept in the air until this work was done. Unaware of this new danger, thousands waited to pick up the report that would send rescue ships to the missing plane. But to the wife, there came a premonition of some new peril that cast its shadow over her husband. So, with the conclusion of the report, came the crushing news of their fate. And thus, two heroes once again preserved the finest traditions of the amateur radio fraternity. The radio message picked up by a ship made possible the rescue of those for whom Crane and his pilot had made the supreme sacrifice. Little wonder that to Jimmy and to thousands of others like him, the amateur radio offers continuous inspiration to render aid in times of stress. Whenever a calamity occurs, the ham operator courageously and unselfishly comes to the service of the community. And speaking of calamities, well, take a look at Ma Mulligan's dinner. Boy, break out the bicarbonate. Now, Ma, remember your blood pressure. Take it easy now. Hmm, so that's the way it is, eh? Well, she'll tell him. That sounds like China. Wow, that's coming 5,000 miles on a homemade set. No wonder the Mulligans are thrilled. Through the genius of little Jimmy, they hear a man speak in far off China. In Chinese, that means that that's all for the night, folks. Yeah, good night.